that no man comes to the Father except through Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in Him would be given the promise of eternal life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. For those who believe in the name of Jesus Christ shall not be condemned, but those who believeth not are condemned already. And this is the condemnation, that a light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. We live in a society that serves self and the God of this world. We're always looking for the latest iPhone and the newest upgraded car. We're spending, 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 searching desperately, hoping to find something that will fill that void deep inside of us. But I'm here to tell you that that void is put there for the spirit of a mighty God. And you can try to fill it up with drugs and alcohol and sex and every other passion and pleasure of this life, but it will only be a temporary satisfaction and you will wake up empty and longing. And it is only when you have been reborn and his spirit has been put inside of you when you'll be given a peace which surpasses all understanding. Believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Understand that I'm not here for myself. I'm here because it is the will of God that no man should perish, but that all might have eternal life with Him. You see, what a lot of people won't understand is that we are here but for a moment. The Word of God says that this life is like a vapor, and then we are gone. The spiritual realm is more real than the physical realm. Eternity is forever. So we must choose today where we will go. God gives you a way out. See, we are all condemned. We're all condemned. And yet Jesus said that he loved you so much, he emptied himself and became a servant and died so that you might be spared from condemnation and be reborn into the kingdom of God as an heir and a joint heir, as a born-again son and a daughter of the living God, that you might be given promise, hope, and victory over this life. You see, I used to have anger. I used to have bitterness and resentment that ran deep in my soul. I was ravaged by hurt in my life, and it wasn't until I surrendered to Jesus that he healed me. We wonder why we wake up every day feeling so messed up, feeling so restless. That's why we chase after all this materialism. Look around you. Look at the wickedness around you. And yet I say that you will not see it until you've been reborn, and the blindness has been lit and has been uh, moved, the scales of deception removed from your eyes so that you might be allowed to see. We live in a materialistic society that wants you to serve the God of self. We live in rebellion against God. See, from the time that we are born, we are indoctrinated and acculturated to serve self first, to live for myself, to make myself happy, to take care of number one. And yet God says that if you pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow Him and walk in the Spirit of God, to walk in the light, to be the salt of the earth, that He will give you a different way and He will bring healing to your soul and He will give you peace. Your reality might not get better in the physical realm. You might not start making more money, but you're going to have a peace through every valley, every dark place. God will give you a way in the wilderness and a highway in the desert. He will be a light in the midst of darkness. He will lead you through every circumstance, every trial of life. Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We all have a testimony that Jesus Christ alone can give you a way out of the despair that you are in. We praise the name of Jesus Christ tonight. Understand that the ruler of this world is erecting statues in the city of demonic entities because we have begun to serve the world and the pride of life and the passions of this life and we have turned from the way of God and begun to serve the darkness. And God said we will not allow it to continue. The eventual judgment will come. But Jesus said I will keep my people in the eye of the storm. Hope in Jesus Christ. Understand that when we die, we will face eternity somewhere. That you will either descend into hell or you will be raised up in the likeness of Christ to reign eternally with Him. That Jesus Christ loved you so much that He died for you.
see, in 1 Corinthians 1, it says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the very power of God. It will never make sense to your mind. It is only when the Spirit of God regenerates you and brings you to life will you understand that the, we serve a living God and that the world is alive. It is quick and powerful and it will break down the forces of darkness in your life. It will strip the sin from your flesh and leave you naked and you're vulnerable. And when you pick up the armor of God, you will then begin to march into the forces of darkness and say, I serve Jesus Christ. I serve a living God and I am not afraid. I am ashamed. I am bold. I will proclaim Jesus. When people mock, when people scorn, I will stand fast and stand firm on the word of God because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. God will raise up a remnant army. We will stand fast on the word of God. We will go to war for your souls, but you must individually choose to accept him into your life and to serve him. Romans 10, 9 says, For if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, then we will, we will be saved. There is a way out of this darkness. We pretend, we put smiles on our faces, and yet deep down we are miserable. Why is that? We go to the pharmacy to pick up more anxiety medication, more antidepressants. Why? When you can go to Jesus and He is the great physician and He can heal your soul. You don't have to be on medication. You don't have to be bound. You can stand in victory and run with Jesus and reach your soul. And you can use your brokenness that was once in your life as a testimony to praise his name and to bring hope to other people. Your beauty will not get you into heaven. Your clothes, your designer clothes will not get you into heaven. Your bank account will not get you into heaven. Mark 8, 36 says, what does the prophet a man? What should a prophet a man? If he gave the whole world and yet forfeit his soul. You see, there was a rich man. Jesus told a parable about a rich man that descended into hell. And he looked across the abyss. And he saw Lazarus. And he said, Lazarus, if you'll only bring me a drop of water. I'm so thirsty. And yet this rich man had everything. And everything in his world. And yet he loved it more than God. We must begin to understand that only Jesus Christ can bring redemption for our souls. That he is a light in the midst of darkness. That we can be a city on a hill where the light of Christ shines as a beacon of hope in the night. He is the eternal hope and salvation of all mankind. Jesus Christ loves you. I'm here because I love you. I don't agree with any of your ways, and yet I stand here saying that God can transform the most wicked of sinners. It does not matter if you have committed murder. It does not matter if you have been a drug addict. It does not matter if you have molested little children. God will change you. You cannot continue in sin that grace might abound, but everyone is the will of God that none should perish. Everyone can go before the throne of God and repent for their sins, and God will transform you. He will take away those strongholds. He will change your life and illuminate the, 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 the knowledge of your sin. And He will give you the strength to turn away from it and overcome it. Believe in Jesus. Understand that His grace and His mercy can reach you. But you must surrender your heart to Him today. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and you will be saved. Understand that we all have a choice. We all have a decision. Eternity is forever. We are not here for very long. We are here, but for a moment our life is a vapor and then we die. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When your mom and your dad leave, uh, they, they let you down, they fail you. When you go through bad relationship after bad relationship where people promise you, I'll never leave you. I love you so much. I'll never leave you. And yet, just like that new car, that new wears off and all of a sudden we're looking to upgrade to the newest husband, the newest wife and you're alone again, and you're broken again, and you're empty again. But Jesus said, even in the midst of your darkest storm, I will never leave you. And the great thing about it is when you live a fully surrendered life unto God, your relationships will last because you will understand that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this present world of spiritual wickedness in high places. 
and we will begin to go to war against the forces of darkness instead of each other. We won't call each other names. We won't be looking to go to the nearest swinger club. We cannot continue and live to live in wickedness and yet profess Jesus Christ. I come across so many people that say, I know Jesus, I'm good, bro. And yet they don't want to hear anything you have to say. I'm here to tell you when I come across a genuine brother in Christ, a genuine sister in the Lord, when I bring up Jesus and they are born again, child of God, they're going to say, praise the name of Jesus. You're going to know, you're going to feel that witness.